In this tutorial, we will be discussing determining significant figures in calculations. When numbers are used in calculations, the result is rounded to, the, to reflect the significant figures of the data. For calculations involving multiple steps, round only the final answer, do not round between step, steps. This prevents small rounding errors from affecting the final answer. Also, when you're looking at different numbers, let's say we're rounding this number here. We need to round it, let's say, to this, we need four significant figures, so we want to round it off to the six. While you only pay attention to the next number, you don't pay attention to the four or any other numbers, just the only the one that's just immediately following the one that you want to round. If it's less than four, you keep it the same. If it's more, if it's five or more, you put it up one. So since it's a three here, it would be 13.96. If it was a different number, okay, I'm still running off to that six because that's greater than five, the number would be 13.97. There are a set of rules. There's two sets, one for multiplying and dividing, and one for adding and subtracting. We are looking at multiplication and division. You multiply and divide the numbers as you normally would. So for instance, 5.892 divided by 6.10 comes out to be 0 0.96590. Once you do that, go back to your original numbers and look at the number of significant figures in each of them. For instance, here we have one, two, three, four significant figures. And the next number we have 6.10, which has three significant figures. Remember this zero does count because you actually see a decimal there. Then you pick whichever one is fewer. Since three ha is a fewer amount of significant figures, that's how many significant figures you're going to have in the final answer. So that means we're going to round it off to the three significant figures. This first zero does not count because it's a leading zero. So that's not one of the three I need. So nine, six, five are the numbers I'm going to be looking at. Because the next number is a nine, I'm going to round it up to 0 0.966. Let's do another one. 5.02 times 89.665 times 0 0.10. If I multiply those three numbers together, I get 45.0118. Now I go back and I look at each of the numbers individually. I have three significant figures here. I have five significant figures here. And I have two in the final number. Notice the first zero is a leading zero, so it does not count. The last zero is a trailing zero, but it has a decimal, so it does count. With a decimal, it counts. Without a decimal, it does not. All right, so I have three significant figures in the first one, five in the second one, and two in the last. You pick the number with the fewest. So therefore, two is the fewest. I'm going to round this off to two significant figures, which would be 45. The next number is four or less. So therefore, I don't change that number. I don't round it up or down. It just stays the same. All right, so let's look at one if it had scientific notation. When it deals with scientific notation, you want to look at all the digits that are in there. So here I have three significant figures. Here I have four significant figures. Remember, this is a trailing zero, but I do see a decimal, so it counts. The times 10 does not affect those numbers at all. To put this into your calculator, you're going to want to try to find a button on your calculator that says EE or it, or it says EXP. Chances are it's a second function. You want to look for this button first. This is your first option. If you don't have one, there are a couple, I think, TI calculators out there, the newer ones, that say times 10 to the X. That's the button you're going to want to push. If it just says 10 to the X and there is no time sign at the beginning, 
that is the wrong button. Do not push that button. You will get it wrong. You don't want to do that. Okay, so just to talk you through how my calculator works, I would put 6.05 second function EE 6. EE or EXP means times 10. That replaces that. It's not 6.05 times EE. Don't put the time sign in there anywhere. It's 6.05 EE 6 divided by 4.020 EE negative 9. Once again, I probably have to do a second function EE. That comes out to be 2.43 2, 1 times 10 to the negative 2. Now let's go back and look at our significant figures. The first one only has three significant figures. The second one has four. So therefore, I want to take the first three numbers. So my final answer is going to be 2.43 times 10 to the negative 2. That times 10 to the negative 2 stays while the other numbers drop out. There's a different set of rules for adding and subtracting. This one you're going to look at the place value rather than the quantity. It's easiest if you stack them up lining up that decimal. And then lean back a little bit and just look at the numbers themselves. The number that ends first from left to right is where you're going to cut off the number. So for instance here, 7 is our last significant figure. The second number, the one is the last significant figure. And the third number, the, the last two is your last significant figure. You want to end your number with whichever number ends first. So since this one here ends before the other ones, that's where I'm going to round it off. So I'm going to draw a line right after it. And that tells me that I'm going to round it off at the 8. The next number is 6, so I'm going to round it up to 9, so 124.9. Let's take a look at that again. We round the intermediate answer to two decimal places because the quantity of the fewest decimal places has two decimals. So for here, the 4 is the last one. The second number, the three is the last one. The third number, the one is the last one. You want to end it where the where whichever number ends first. So because of that, I'm going to end it at that one. So 9.21. For here, 4.8. 8 is the last significant figure. 3.965. 5 is the last significant figure. The 8 ended first, so that means I'm going to round it out to the 0.8. I only have one significant figure in my final answer, but that's okay because I'm looking at the place value, not the quantity. Let's try the one on our own. 20.15 minus 10.569. First thing you want to do is stack up the numbers. The next thing you want to do is just the calculation itself. Now let's look at those place values. This one ends at the 5. The second one ends at the 9. So I want to draw a line where, those, where the first one ends. That means I'm going to round it off to the 8. So our final answer is 9. 0.58. In calculations involving both multiplication and division, or and addition and subtraction, do the steps in parentheses first. Determine the correct number of significant figures in the intermediate answer, but you don't actually do anything with it. Keep it in the back of your mind, so that way you can look at it later. Then do the remaining steps and figure out your final answer. So for instance here, calculation of 3.589 times 5.67 minus 
because this is in parentheses, I'm going to do that first. That comes out to be 3.37. I don't want to round it off just yet. All I want to do is remind myself that in the final answer, I'm going to round it off to that second 3. I'm not going to do 3.4 yet, just 3.37 with that knowledge in the back of my head. So you use the subtraction rule to determine that the intermediate answer has only one significant decimal place, which is that 0.3. To avoid small errors, it is best not to round at this point. Instead, underline the least significant figure as a reminder. Then do the calculations. So we can insert this number back into the original equation. And that gives us 11.758. Then I go back and I think about the rules for multiplication and division and I remind myself that I need the quantity of significant figures. The first number has four. If we look at that second number with the correct number of significant figures, I know I only need two. So two is fewer, so that means my final answer will only have two. So use the multiplication rule to determine that the intermediate answer rounds to two significant figures because it is limited by the two significant figures in the 3.37. And that's how you perform calculations with significant figures.